London's gaming industry is set for a £1 million boost as a digital festival is coming to the capital in April. It's being backed by the Mayor's Office and organisers are hoping it will make the city the games capital of the world. Jessica King reports. Games London will be a three-year programme that will help the games sector shout louder and attract more investment. A virtual Boris Johnson in a virtual London. The Mayor's announcing a new gaming festival for the capital through the medium of Minecraft, one of the most popular video games in recent years. It'll help companies secure finance and forge business links, but organisers are also hoping it will shift perceptions of gaming. Some people might have some stereotypical views about who the audience for games are, or you know, people might think they only exist in cert on certain platforms or in certain categories, but we've got a programme of, co of, kind of events and things going on across the, across the city in April that I think will change and readdress how people see it. The three-year program will create new jobs and expand skills and training, as well as generating £35 million in revenue. The London game sector is a bit smaller than other cities' game sectors, so we think there's a job to do uh, at a local level in terms of helping raise that industry's profile and grow it more. And uh, Part of our program is plans to bring in additional revenue for those companies and create 300 jobs uh, in games over the next three years. We're actually taking a small amount of money and going to help, you know, multiply that by 10 going back into the economy in London. Peter Pashley is the tech director of one British developer which created Monument Valley, a game that's been downloaded more than 24 million times. I think if it, if it is kind of played right, then it's got huge potential to be a massive player on the, on the games industry scene. It's a huge industry and often it's kind of underreported in the media and people tend to have a opinion of it which is uh, may be influenced by the, by the very much most successful games that are out there, uh, whereas it's actually a very vibrant in industry of much smaller games as well. So hopefully it will shine a light on the, the vari variation of games that exist out there and the, the kind of different um, cultural influences that they derive from, uh, and also show the crossover between games and all of the other industries in London, especially with the uh, film and other visual arts. I think that's a, that kind of virtuous circle of the various technical disciplines and artistic disciplines is extremely important. The 2016 London Games Festival starts on the 1st of April. Joining me now is one eSports fan, Charlotte Waters. Now, Charlotte, we just saw that report there and you looked at a lot of young gamers, predominantly men, but there are increasingly women who are getting involved in eSports. Yeah, there is. There's um, a pro league at the minute that's gone online uh, for Call of Duty, which is actually just for females. So although we see that typical uh, male domination, there is actually the female minority that do push through in competitive gaming as well. I mean, do you think it's, it's partly down to the games or how they're marketed or a sort of a, a cultural issue? What do you think it is that's been holding women back from playing for this time? Um, it's the perceptions of the games, I think. Um, a lot of it is based around people will assume that it's younger generation um, and predominantly boys that would play it. But actually, I think maybe in the way we're perceiving games now actually is opening up to that female demographic. And you mentioned the perception of games because, re you know, relatively, you know, gaming is a huge industry, there's a huge number of people play it, but it's not well represented in the mainstream media. You know, we don't re review no. games in newspapers in the same way that we do sort of films, and you know, do you think there's a problem that we're still yeah. people aren't reaching it? The same I think way? it's something that's growing massively, um, and competitive esports in particular. Um, so there's a lot now that's actually moving more towards like a football. So there's the Call of Duty World League, which is almost like a football league where teams compete and then go into the relegation zone, um, and you can actually bet online for these type of thing. It is moving more towards like football. I mean, it's extraordinary, and then and huge number of people go and watch these guys play as well. That, that's a big industry in itself, the spectators. Yeah, so there's not just the, the players that go, um, that come to London for events, but also the people who then come and watch these events as well, and, and that is building massively. I mean, that will sound quite funny, some people going to watch some mm. other people playing a video game, but what's the atmosphere like at these events? It is, I don't want to compare it solely just to to football, but actually it is just like going to, you know, they've got this big arena and you've got... Um, you know, these areas where the players sit and you kind of sit back and just watch in like these cinema seats and it is just growing massively um, and I do think it will become something that's actually seen a lot differently in, in years to come. Um, do you, when you sort of look at how gaming, you know, is and it's 
I mean, often it's sort of it's seen as something that parents had to restrict. Yeah. Do you think there's, you know, it's all about, you to use a, a cliche, finding a balance with how, how people grow up with games? Yeah, definitely. I think the perception is that a lot of people who play games are the, are the kind of people who should be at school. Maybe they skip school, don't play, like they play the games instead. Actually, if you go to these competitive games, they're actually a lot higher than school age, you know, sixth form and above. Um, and a lot of events restrict this age and they have to be 18 or above to compete. Um, but what's important to know as well, I don't think a lot of people know, but in competitive Call of Duty, in the last game, they actually were paintball burst instead of... Because there's a lot of connotation around this builds a negative, you know, kind of connotation in people's mind that they're just on a death spree. It's actually now more of a paintball kind of game. So, you know, less, less bloody and less gory, yes. more family friendly. Now, um, you met your, you got into gaming through your fiance, mm. uh, and it had a very happy ending. This, tell us about <laughs> how, about how that developed. Um, so, he used to play kind of on the casual and said to me once, "If you beat me in a one v one, I will propose to you." Um, so, obviously, now I'm engaged. Um, he went off to work, and I was still at uni at the time. Um, so. I had a lot of time to kind of build on my Call of Duty skills. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when you beat him at Call yeah. of Duty. That's, I mean, that, there's a lesson there, I think, for all women. If you're waiting to be proposed to, maybe you just got to beat him at Call yeah, of Duty. Yeah, exactly. Just that's practice a bit and you'll be there. Practice a bit. Charlotte Walter, thank you so thank much you. for coming and talking to us today.